All right, it's Junkman from VintageRock.com, and uh, I am here at uh, NAMM 2017 with uh, somebody who I've admired for a long time from the band X. You've heard X um, from Los Angeles. They legends. I have drummer, drummer uh, DJ Bonebreak here with me. How you doing? It's good to be here. How are you doing? Nice uh, to meet you. I'm in awe of you right now. Oh, simply you're too kind. You're too kind. I've been an X fan for a very, very long time. Like, you know, God, 40 years of X now, you know? Wow, that's right. I always say it's 39 years for me. I was the last member to join. So, so Close so enough. I, <laughs> I'm riding the coattails. You're I, I, rounded I, I, I'm calling it the Jack Benny uh, uh, anniversary. He, he was famous for celebrating his 39th birthday over and over, for, over, and over so I know a lot of girls that do the same thing yeah yeah I'm sure <laughs> a lot of men who do it so but it's a very special day for you you got presented uh, we're at the at the uh, Natal drums and they've presented you with your own kit which is right behind you by the way yeah, let's take a look at this beautiful look at this it's uh, I haven't played it yet I haven't played it yet so but I know they make great drums I, you oh, know God. I play them all the time and it's this is made out of tulip now i didn't know that there was tulip wood you know yeah like uh, you know i've heard of three ply but never tulip yeah right? tulip yeah well uh so i can't wait to can't wait to try it out but it's it, it's a new color yeah, yeah. it's called uh ox blood red suede and you can see it looks like suede you know and and uh, the snare drum is a hand hammered. I think it's called uh, old bronze. If I, I haven't tried that yet, but but I have a couple of the hand hammered. Some of the other ones, the nickel, and I think it's the copper, and those are amazing drums. Yeah. I mean, just they're just top quality. You know, as good as any drum in the world. I just love those so much. So well, I can't they'd, wait ha to they'd have to stand up to your assault that you do, man. You're a heavy hitter. Well, well, I am. And but but you know, actually, lately with X, we've been. I've, we've been playing something softer. We do we do some of the B cuts, and and we'll, I'll play some of the songs softer, and then we'll give it the full frontal assault yeah. a, assault near the end. We'll, you know, I'll hit as hard as. Well, I, I went used just to. a couple of weeks ago to see it at the Roxy in Hollywood on the 30th of uh, December, and I just I was blown away by the diversity. Like you said, you're pulling out some of the B cuts, you're playing some of the softer things, and you actually there was part of the show where you're actually playing the vibes. How did that all come about? Uh, well, I mean, I, I've played vibes for a long time. I mean, I, I started with marimba way back when I was in high school because I was playing symphonic stuff, so I had to, you know, it's like, oh, I have to take lessons. So I did that and then gave it up. It's a long story, but I, I, I started playing again in the 90s. And uh, so about a couple of years ago, we, uh, X got an offer to play some acoustic shows. So we, we started, we, we did a, a tour, a lighter tour, and we said, wouldn't it be cool to, to uh, um, first play some, some of the songs we haven't played, like Come Back to Me, which had a little bit of vibes on it, and then, and then do uh, more ethereal, different version, you know, ethereal type versions of a couple of those other songs. So I brought out the vibes, and, and that's when we added a, 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 a fifth member as a utility player. And the guy who's working for us right now uh, is Craig Packham. And he plays some acoustic guitar to back Play some drums, too. He, he plays drums. That's his first instrument. Yeah. So he'll play drums on three numbers while I'm playing vibes. So, um, you know, I, I love playing vibes. I, you know, I, I, I've been trying, you know, over the years to play the best I can as, you know, being, at my, being my second instrument. Right. It's hard to put all my efforts right. toward it. But, but I've played in a couple jazz bands, you know, a Latin jazz band called Orchestra Superstring, another band called the, uh, the Bonebreak Syncopators, right. played 30s jazz. So... Uh, you know, I have some experience. I, I'm modest about it because it's such a hard instrument. Right. But I do the whole thing with four mallets and play. Yeah, all the, you know, I know. All the like I said, it's just like it's like watching the jazz. But and then on top of that, guitar player Billy Zoom playing the saxophone, which I never even knew that he played. Billy played uh, saxophone. That was his. I don't know if it was his main instrument, but that's he because he started, I think, with guitar. But. Uh, all through all through school, he played saxophone in the in the you know in the jazz band, you know, and, and he hadn't played forever. When he first started picking it up again, his embouchure wasn't that great. You could tell he knew what he was doing, yeah. but 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 uh, you know, it was a little rusty. Tone, a little rusty. His tone wasn't that great. He's getting so much better now yeah. as he plays more and more. And he has obviously he has so much experience. He can just think of a melody, play it. He can improvise. You know, he's you know, and and uh, yeah, he's. He, Amazing player, you know. If you 
Now, how do you convince, like, you know, a legendary punk band from L.A. to actually let you get up and play the vibes and the saxophone as, you know, into the mix? I mean, you guys are legendary punk roots band. How do you convince, the, you know, John and Exine well, to say, this is, you know, let's let's try this? Or, well, and I mean, they were really into it. In, in a way, they wanted us to do it. It's, yeah. it you know, uh, uh, they're, they're encouraging us. In fact, I'm sometimes reluctant, like, oh, God, I have to... You know, play the vibes. I have to. Re, you know, they're making me play a solo. Oh man, I have to. I have to. You know, really think about this. You know, because it's so much easier to do what you're best at and right. you're most comfortable with doing. And with the vibes, you know. Also, the problem with the vibes is it's an acoustic instrument. So sometimes, you know, it's hard to hear it over the rest of the band, even though they're they're especially trying to if they're it. playing live for forty years. You know. Yeah. Huh. What are you saying? Yeah. yeah. But but it's yeah. Just it's so so. Um, but they they're in, you know they they want to do this too and I think you know after you've been playing for so many years you want to break it up you want to do something different you don't want to you know you you, you just go I found I find that you know sometimes we were just we were always great but always sometimes you feel like you're going through the motions because yeah. you know the song so well I think the best thing that happened to us was the fact that the last couple of years we've added these other things and it's kept us on our toes yeah. learning songs we haven't played right. playing different instruments and and I, I think I think most of the fans seem to like the variety. Loved it. Because we're playing, we're playing things like, you know, uh, like I said, Come Back to Me, I yeah. Must Not Think Bad Thoughts, uh, Drunk in My Past. We're playing, you know, the, some of the cuts. In a are, completely you know, different, vi in a completely different way, too, from the original. So. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and Dancing with Tears in My Eyes was another one. So, yeah, we, we give them that. You know, it's not wimpy, but compared to, you know, the full punk rock thing, it's, you know, it's lighter. But but I think I think it adds, uh, it adds to the to, uh, the presentation. It's not just an hour and fifteen of you know right. of really loud stuff. It's, you know it starts out starts out bigger, and then we you know we come down and we do, you know, give them some different uh, more acoustic sounding right. sounding things, and you can hear the vocals better. And then you know at the end we go crazy, and, you know, <laughs> give an encore. And, now as a fan, did this lead to some more songwriting between you guys? I'm not sure if we'll do that. It's 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 uh, you know both both John and Xene are really prolific and they they John has his own band. Xene off and on has her band. You know comes and goes. Right. So I mean they they, they totally have the ability to write and they have been. You know, but uh, I'm not sure if it's going to translate into new X stuff or not. I can't tell. I mean, just I love what you guys do, and so do all X fans, obviously. But you know, you pack them in every time you play. So I love the fact that you guys come around every Christmas, you know, and do a tour and things like that. It's always uh, a great holiday, you know, thing to look forward to when X is coming to town. So yeah, well, it's, that's it's what great you're doing. for us. We we started that tradition a little while ago. I don't know if it's been ten years or something. Uh, it was our manager's uh, suggestion. Uh, Mike Rouse to, to play on the West Coast. We yeah. go up to Seattle and go, you know, from Seattle to uh, San Diego, and so it makes it easier for us because we can come home for Christmas. Right. We can, we're you know, right. we're home, and then we can go to San Diego or right. you know, and uh, yeah, it's it's been really good, great tradition. Now the Billy's feeling better too. Which he's is great. he he's he's finishing up his last chemo. He had bladder cancer. Yeah. He was diagnosed must have been about a year and a half ago. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we did a tour without him because he, you know, he was diagnosed right before the tour had had an operation. Uh, so uh, we went out with Jesse Dayton playing guitar. And, you know, he did a great job. He had a week to prepare himself to do wow. all the songs. You know, learn all. It's amazing things. how they do that. I, I mean, he was, you know, he's pretty amazing. You know, uh, yeah, to do that, and it's not, it's not easy. And then Billy came back, and he's doing so much better now. You know, really, it, it, I, I can hear it in his playing. He looks better. Yes. You know, and always uh, smiling. Yeah, always smiling, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's great. He's Billy's really great. Really good. Now, again, going back to your relationship with uh, 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 Natal Drums, um, tell us how long this relationship's gone on for. Why these? Why them, as opposed to other drum companies? Well, I mean. <laughs> There are a lot of companies I could go with, but mostly because of my relationship with Josh Touchton, um, who... And I know I'm saying it wrong. I know it's Natal, but... But, you know, yeah, Natal. But, but um, uh, 
Yeah, I met Josh Touchton uh, years ago. Well, he called me up in, in 2000. He was working for Mapex. He said, come on down to the NAMM show. He says, you ever go to the NAMM show? I go, oh, well, no, well, you know, no one ever invites me. So he invited me down and I started using those drums. And then he went to another company, a string company. And then, uh, but every time he goes to a drum company, I follow him because I really respect him. And so I followed him here a few years ago. And, 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 and he's really great because he, you know, he helps develop some of the things and, and he's someone I can talk to and, you know, I can tell him what I think, you know, because I, I, I consider him a friend. So, you know, I only see him a couple times a year. I see him when we go to Nashville or when I come here, but I hang out with him. And, and uh, you know, he comes up with really good ideas for, for hardware. And, you know, Obviously, and, he came up with this. It's beautiful. He came up with this, the color, the, the, you know, and, and uh, yeah, and I, I think his wife helped him with the color scheme. She said, you know, she was going to we want, you know, what kind of rims do you want in there? She said, it should be, you know, I guess it's ivory white, you know. She said it'll go really well, and she was right. So, so, um, so that's the main reason, but uh, besides just that practical reason, they sound really good, and they're really durable. Yeah. And, you know, I've been playing these with the X, and, you know, we talk about when I play hard, uh, you know, things haven't been breaking. You know, I haven't been breaking pedals. You know, they, they were really strong. Uh, the drums sound great. Uh, so so I can use them on recordings. I can use them for, you know, local gigs. I can use them with X. Uh, you know, and, and so, I mean, so really the quality is important. You know, and, 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 and I think, if, you know, it's, it, it's, they're not the biggest company, but I, I could see them growing exponentially. You know, it takes a while, for, you know, I mean, I, I go to drum stores or, or, you know, music stores and you don't see them in, a, in enough stores. Right. And the same thing happened to me when I was with Mapex. In 2000, you know, I go to the Guitar Center and I go, hey, do you have uh, Mapex drums? They go, oh, no. Yeah. And if, now they're in stores, so it takes a while. So I think it's just a matter of time before people realize how great the drums are. Yeah, well, the first time I saw them, they had recreated John Bonham's kit, like an amber, almost Ludwig Vistalite type of drum. And uh, dude, I was like blown away by the quality and how great they sounded. So yeah, yeah, they're again, re they're really good. And they look nice and they're coming up with new colors and their snare drums are amazing. The, you know, the, the hand hammered series is my yeah. favorite. I mean, yeah. those, I had people, I play, you know, I play them at shows or engineer, and, and I play them in the studio, and they always say, "Wow, where, you know, uh, where can I get one of those? You know, which one are you using?" I was playing in San Diego, and this drummer I know, he said, "Wow, that was that drum sounded so good. You know, yeah. which one are you using? I'm going to order one." Yeah. You know, and, and so, um, uh, and, and so yeah, you can't you can't go wrong with that. And, and, and I have a stave drum that they gave me. You know. It's really great. Uh, 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 it's made out of rosewood, you know, and uh, you know it's well, more rosewood. Huh? Yeah, more rosewood. Uh, so tulip wood and rosewood. It was a rosewood. No, wait, wait. I have no. I have. I may have it mixed up. It's walnut. Sorry, rosewood. Okay. I'm thinking marimbas. Uh, it's it's walnut, and I have a walnut kit too. That's just amazing. That's the first kit they gave me, and that ah, uh, yeah, that one just sounds so great. But yeah, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's a walnut stave drum. And it's so funny, you know, every drum has a purpose. I found that that works for really light things, like really crisp things. And then I have a band called The Devil's Brigade that I play in with Matt Freeman from Rancid. And I found that that's the drum to play with this, you know, punk trio, because it's, it's really, it has a lot of attack, you know. And I was just going to ask you, like, tell us about other projects that you're going to be uh, involved with. I know you got to go, you got a signing going on over here in a minute, but yeah, just let, let us know what's going on for 2017. Well, let's see. Let me try to remember, because you know, bands come and go. I play with. I do a lot of side projects, and uh, like I said, I was playing in a couple of uh, of vibe bands that I, they, they were playing for 15 years, and I, those kind of dissipated because it's hard to keep a band together that long. Uh, but uh, well, the Devil's Brigade is one, and we're you know, I put a, I put out a record with Matt Freeman and uh, Tim Armstrong from the band. Uh, yes. You know, play Rancid, guitar on yeah. it too, and uh, he doesn't play live. Uh, but but uh, uh, Rob Malucky plays guitar, great great guitar player. So we we're playing whenever we can, uh, whenever X or Rancid isn't on the road. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, oh uh, Dead Rock West is a band I play with. Uh, it's a it's a duo, uh, uh, 
uh, Frank Lee Drennan and Cindy Lee Wasserman, singers, they sing so well together. We did a, we did a, 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 a Everly Brothers tribute. It was actually recorded in 2010, but it didn't come out until last year. And I think it was, it was up for a Grammy. I don't think it wow. won, but, but, but really they did a great job uh, you know, uh, singing and, you know, it was Dave Alvin was playing guitar from the Blast, or from, well, Dave Alvin he used to right. be the Blasters, and, and me and some other people, and, and uh, 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 you know, Rob Wasserman, who was yep. uh, Cindy's brother, was before he passed away, unfortunately, yep. last year. He Great was on musician. the record. So, so, yeah, so I play with them. We've got a, a new record that will come out maybe this year. John Doe produced it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Trying to think what else I'm doing this year. I mean, I play I play with people around town. So absolutely nothing. Your 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 schedule is clear. Well, it's so funny because because I'm actually I, I I play with a local violinist. His name is uh, Chris Murphy, and I do a lot of shows with him when I'm you know in town. Yeah. And and he does bluegrass. He does some country. You know, and, and we play weddings. We play bars. Uh, and then uh, I'm playing some shows with John Doe. We're doing the Stagecoach. So I did a tour with him last summer, his solo band. Yep. Uh, we were talking about with uh, maybe resurrecting uh, Xene's band called Antichrist, like aunt and uncle, right. Antichrist. Right. Uh, was a, we did a record in 95, and we were thinking maybe we'll try to you know resurrect that, play a few shows. Any plans for the Knitters to uh, regroup again? Nothing right now. Okay. It happens every so often. Right. So it's funny, usually I go, you know, I just, I'm always playing, but I have a few months off and I'm playing a, a few things. I, you know, I'm, I'm recording with friends and, you know, I've done a couple sessions and, you know, so it's kind of rare that I'm not, I just don't jump back into the fire and play. Right, you got a lot to keep bands. you occupied, man. It's a great thing. Yeah, but I, but I, uh, you know, uh, some years I would tell you I'm playing with, you know, 10 bands, 15 bands, right. you know, but I'm not playing as, with as many right now. And X is going to tour a lot this year. We've we've got some one-off shows in in Tucson and and uh, and uh, Tucson and Phoenix in March. Uh, we're doing uh, about 30 dates in May. We're doing close to that many dates in September, wow. and the same in December. So we're because we're, we're celebrating the 40th anniversary, yes, yes. and so we're going to tour more than we you know we we usually tour about two-thirds of that half to two-thirds of that so 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 you know it's it's may not be a, an 18 month tour you know world tour but we're going to uh, you know be playing a lot bring the music to the people and make it go bang yes we'll try to do that <laughs> well TJ I appreciate you okay, talking with us here at vintagerock.com and uh, again enjoy uh, enjoy your new kit enjoy the rest of NAM. enjoy uh, being on the road with uh, X and others and all the rest so Again, okay. it was a real pleasure. Thank I'm you. Junk Man, Thank Vintage so Rock.com with uh, DJ Bonebreak from X right here at, uh, right. at, uh, at Dam.